Today, I'm going to try being an MC. This is my first time, so bear with me. Thank you. And we have David and Jesus with us from Cystic, right? And they're going to talk about scaling your Kubernetes cluster with custom metrics using Keta and Prometheus. Hello, everyone. Uh, how many of you have the nightmares when you have to deploy an HPA in a Kubernetes cluster? Any of you? Come on. <laughs> really? We are the only ones? I can't believe it. Um, we ha we, we've had several nightmares using HPA, especially yeah. in live environments, in live Kubernetes clusters. And how many of you have afraid to uh, deploy an HPA to in a live Kubernetes cluster? Because it's, it's scary too. Yeah, so uh, my name is David. My name is Jesus. Uh, we work at Cystic. Uh, we help to our customers to understand uh, what, uh, how their cluster is working. Yeah. Yeah, again, what is, what's an SPA? An SPA is an horizontal pod of the scaler that allows us to scale our workloads uh, based on memory, CPU, uh, and it's great in many scenarios. But uh, HPA is only for workloads. So if you are going to uh, scale your cluster, you have to use another thing that is uh, Kubernetes cluster autoscaler. Um, H is for horizontal. So if you want to scale your workload vertically, you have to use a vertical a uh, pod autoscaler that comes with Kubernetes. So we're talking about scaling our applications in Kubernetes, and there are a few tools we can use, and depending, depending on each scenario, we'll be using one or another. Just for summarize, so we are all in the same page here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so everyone is on the same page here. We can use HPA, VPA, and cluster autoscaler. We'll be using HPA and VPA for our scaling workloads, and we will be using cluster autoscaler for auto, uh, for scaling your cluster, your your machine. Uh, HPA uh, is for pods, VPA is for limits and requests. So we'll be using HPA if our application can be easily distributed. For example, a microservice. On the other hand, we'll be using a VPA if our application needs just one single core thread with higher resources, for example, a monolith. And we'll be using cluster autoscaler in both previous scenarios when we run out of physical resources. So here's the thing. HPA has some limitations. We all use HPA every day, but it, have, it, it has some limitations. HPA doesn't allow combining metrics, and it exposes just uh, a reduced number of metrics by default, which are basically CPU and memory. These metrics come from the Kubernetes metrics server. If you want more metrics there, you have to m make a custom implementation of, of that server. So sometimes we, ne we need more. Uh, for example, imagine that you want to monitor your application using the, using the golden signals. You might need to monitor your traffic, your saturation, your, er your errors, or your latency. Or imagine that you want to combine those metrics in formulas or make mathematical operations with them. We were talking le le uh, earlier about how, how Prometheus let us do this, right? Uh, or make aggregations. So what if we could use Prometheus and PromQL to feed our HPA? That would be great. So let's see a couple of scenarios to, to show uh, what we want to, to say here. Imagine we have an Nginx server, and we want to scale it up to five pods based on saturation. What's the problem here? Nginx doesn't increase memory or CPU when it's saturating. So with the out-of-the-box metrics that HPA can use, this, is, this isn't enough. 
what would be the solution here? The solution here would be to use the fantastic Nginx Prometheus Exporter, which has this metric, which is uh, the connections weighting. We could use, we could calculate the average of the connections weighting and set up a threshold. For example, if the average connections weighting for Nginx are above 20, for example, we'd like to create another pod. But let's see a more complex uh, example. Now, uh, let's say we have three Apache uh, Tomcat pods and we want to scale it up uh, five pods based on the memory usage versus the memory limits. So the problem here is we cannot get the limits in the HPA that Kubernetes give us because the metric is not there. But, uh, and also, uh, we could uh, fix a threshold, like a fixed threshold for a particular workload. But if we have to change the spec or we have to change, change the request or the limits in this case, we will have to change the HPH2. So the solution here is to use the QPO container resource limits that give us a um, KSN exporter and use the container memory uh, usage that give us the C advisor that is already running in Kubelet. Having the container memory usage uh, divided by the container uh, limit, we are getting the percentage of the memory usage by the workload. So we can yet say that we can use a threshold of 85% and we will scale it with that. So one of the solution here is use, using Prometheus Adapter. The Prometheus, the Prometheus Adapter is a custom implementation of the Kubernetes metric servers. This uh, adapter uses Prometheus as a uh, storage the metrics so we can use all metrics that the exporters give us. But uh, no, also, sorry, we can uh, use all math that PromQL give us. We can create aggregations and we could use all the power that Prometheus give us. Prometheus adapter is great, but you cannot use it in all scenarios. Imagine that you have a Prometheus server outside of your cluster or maybe you have a Prometheus that is authenticated. So let's meet Kira. Let's meet Kira. Oui? Let's meet Kira. Uh, Kira is a CNCF incubating project. It's an open source project that you can deploy on your Kubernetes cluster. Basically, what Kira does is more or less the same as Prometheus Adapter. It, it creates an, a custom implementation of the Kubernetes metric server so you can feed it with metrics from different scalers. One of these scalers that, that Kida uh, brings us is Prometheus. But if you take a look at the website, there's tons of them. Um, so what Kida does is it brings us a custom resource that we can use to create easily an HPA. Uh, the, the main benefit of using Kira is how easy it is to deploy an HPA. It's just a couple of steps. It's, it's easy peasy, really. And also, you can use uh, Kira to uh, auto-scale your applications with metrics from a Prometheus server outside your cluster or Prometheus server that it's behind an authentication. So this is a summary of the case scenarios. If you just need the CPU and memory that came out of the box with uh, the default HPA, you can use Kubernetes HPA. If you need a more powerful, more, more sophisticated metrics, you can use Prometheus Adapter. If your Prometheus cluster, uh, if your Prometheus is inside your cluster and it's it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have authentication. And you can use Kira in the other cases, like any other case. Uh, I mean, you can use Kira in all the cases. So to install Kira, it's pretty straightforward. You just create an, an M space and you install the Helm chart there. And then this is where the magic uh, starts. This is the custom resource I was, I was talking about earlier. This is a scaled object. In a scaled object, you, 
uh, you have to set a few things. For example, what is the target? In this case, the, the workload target that you want to out of scale. Uh, in this case, is the Nginx server, which is a deployment. Then you have to set up the min maxim, the min replica count, in this case one, and the max replica count, in this in this case is five. And finally, what is the type of the scaler that you're using? In this case, we're using Prometheus. We, we love Prometheus. Uh, and what is the query that we are using? In this case, this is the query we were explaining earlier in the first scenario. We want to use the average waiting connections of Nginx. We also have to set a threshold, which in this case is 20. So basically, this is the first. The, this is a solution for the first scenario we were talking earlier. If the average uh, waiting connections are above 20, uh, the, HPA we, the HPA we will create a new pod for our Nginx. And when we deploy this scaled object in our Kubernetes cluster, if we install Kira, uh, this will generate automatically the HPA in our cluster. And, th and that's it. That you, you, you have your, your HPA working based on, your, on, your, on the data you want. So let's see a demo. Okay. Yes. Uh, but it's, it's a it's a video. Yeah. Can No, no, no. No, no, no. You can go. Yeah. Can you start again? Okay, so we are here. Uh, we have an Nginx server with a Nginx exporter running, and we are going to apply the HPA uh, object, the um, Kida, the object scale. Sorry, that we saw before in the last slides, and this is the the object. So we have the same that we saw. So this uh, object, this scaled object, has created an HPA automatically. So we are going to see it, how it looks like in QCTL. So that is the, the HPA. We have now two replicas. We hold automatically um, the HPA have auto scale to two replicas. And we have the mean pods, one mean pod, and five pods. And now we are going to uh, scale the generator. We have a generator to create more uh, connection so we can see how the scaler works. So now we have five uh, traffic generators. Um, now we are going to see the pods that we have two. So right now we have two still, like we saw in the HPA. And now we are going to show the traffic generator pods that are the five that we escalated before. Now we have a, another one. So if we wait some minutes, because uh, the scale have a, no, no, it's not. The scale have a threshold, so we want to wait some time. We will get, yeah, that one. So we will get all the, all the pods that we are expecting. So right now the HPA has the max pods, you can see five replicas of five in the max, and we can see the pods are scaled. So we have five. And the metric is there, so we have nine uh, waiting connections. All right. Okay. We can. on our Kubernetes cluster, but we need to monitor it. So 
I was I was wondering, do you guys know any cool monitoring tool to use to do this? No? Maybe Nagios? No. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> Kira exposes Prometheus metrics. Uh, not by default, you need to set it up uh, in the uh, when, when you install it, just use that, that options over there, Prometheus metric server enabled, and then uh, Kira will start exposing four Prometheus metrics. Uh, the first three are for errors, which are great for creating alerts and have a picture of what is happening on your HPA and, or, and on your Kira. And, but the, the, the last one is very interesting. This, this metric uh, gives us the values of each metric that are, are automatically generated by Kira in the Kubernetes Metrics Explorer. So you can see the picture of actually what is happening and why your um, HPA is doing whatever. So with this Prometheus metrics, you, you could create a cool Grafana dashboard like this one to have the Kira errors aggregated by a scaled object or just all errors. You could have what are all the metrics that are automatically generated and also use some HPA metrics to, to see uh, the, the health of, of your HPA in Kubernetes, not, not just Kira. So th that's, that's all you need to know to start using Kira in your Kubernetes cluster. Let's, let's summarize a little bit. Uh, with the, the main goal of this talk is to show how easy it is to deploy an HPA in Kubernetes with Kira. It's really easy. Uh, it just exposes a custom Kubernetes metric server with Prometheus metrics. These this, this, uh, metrics can be from Prometheus, but there are a lot of scalers. So, so maybe depending on your use case, you, you can find any other scaler that, 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 that fits into your, into your business. Uh, you can use Kira in almost any uh, real life scenario because it's highly configurable and uh, it's ex it also exposes Prometheus metrics to, to, to expose its internals. So monitoring it, it's also straightforward. So that's all we wanted to show you guys today. Thank you. <laughs>